that song is amazing. Let's bring the lights up. Mm. Welcome, everyone. How are you all doing? It is awesome to have you back here. Another week, Q&A. Thank you to everyone who's been here for the last couple of weeks, supporting the channel, supporting YouTube, Facebook, as I bring new fresh content to help you become an amazing ballroom dancer. There is no one doing this anywhere in the world. So yay for us doing this, right? So please make sure you tap onto that button. Just smash the like button. You probably only do it once. It just helps the algorithms. It helps to boost this video in front of other dancers, okay? That's the reason everyone always asks you to do that. Also, make sure you check out Boring Mastery Access, okay? I want you to have a look at that phenomenal program I've put together for you. 500 plus technique lessons and a community and Q&A workshops with me each month. I'm really proud of it. It will help you tremendously. And if you're stuck in with motivation or you're a little bit not as good as you want to be, technique will help you. All right, so little sound check. Can everyone hear me clearly? I want to make sure that you're, I'm good. You're good. We're all good. Okay, so just let me know. And as we go through this, any questions come up? I want you to add them into the uh, section below. All right, so let's hit up. Um, let's hit this up, hey? All right, this first question here. Oh my God, I'm going to destroy your name, dude. <laughs> Tell your Lamy. That's a cool name. Where are you from? That's a cool name, dude. Okay, we'll just call you Telly for short. Do you need to start to learn... How to ballroom dance at an early age. Also, how will you know the type of dance that suits you? Oh, that's a good question. All right, so what do you mostly think in this? What do you mostly think, hey? Um, I'll turn up a little bit more. All right, let's see how that goes, okay? So is that a little better on the, light, on the, uh, the sound front? This is actually good for future reference, so I know. Okay. Thanks, Ulrich. You are always of good service to me. Thank you. All right, so Telly, let's go back to that. Can you be, what age do you need to be to dance? Well, I'll use myself as an example. So in my earlier life, I did a little bit of ballroom dancing when I was eight for like four to six weeks. And then the teacher moved on and I just disliked the new teacher, right? So I stopped. I did a little bit of jazz and tap and ballet, but not very much. And then I sort of dabbled. And then I came back into dancing uh, seriously when I was about 16 and then and when I say seriously I mean um, not 16 sorry I, I made a I was 16 when I was in America and I made a call to my teacher who I remember from eight years old a funny thing like the universe said you need to call this teacher so I decided to call her and said I don't know if you remember me but I really like dancing with you like eight years ago she's like of course come along <laughs> anyway so uh, I was in America at the time and so when I came back I was sort of 17 just about to turn 18 I joined the studio and I fell in love with dancing, right? I fell in love with ballroom dancing. Now, categorically speaking, you're pretty old when you start dancing at that age if you want to do it seriously, right? So if you want to compete. So I'll ask you, what are your goals? What do you want to do? How do you want to dance? Do you want to become a teacher? Do you want to maybe move into comp competition? Do you want to become a professional? Uh, do you want to be a choreographer? Because the answer to that will then determine what you need to do. And so uh, what age are you at the moment? Because that will also preclude some opportunities, but not all of them in ballroom dancing. All right, so in ballroom dancing terms, most people are champions that go on to be serious world champions in their later 20s and early 30s. They're already champions of their country by like 18, 19, 20. So you have a lot of catch up to do, but we get a we get a leg up in ballroom dancing. You can start at any age and become very, very good. Um, but there's a window if you wanna compete in say dance sport at the high echelon of amateur and professional, right? So that's that's the only um, exclusive thing you need to be aware of. In ballet, I was told at 21 when I was doing lessons that I could become a professional ballerina. I was like, what? All right, answer, Alison, you gotta treat me right, otherwise I'm going over there. And the, the reason I said that is fundamentally the training is a little less strenuous. I, don't, I mean, the women, they get put through the meat grinder, right? So you can start a little later as a male, ballerina or ballerino but you also have a time limit so you can't dance beyond a certain age seriously right so you can't do 45 years old and expect to perform well so ballroom dancing has this as well but it's a little different because we can start at 50 and then you know you can train very very hard and become very very good and still compete and be up in the top ranks in the seniors divisions as well so we're very lucky we can do that right up until we die so the answer is um you can start at any age and then it depends on the outcome you want. And, you know, if you're 60 and expecting to be 
winning Blackpool in the professional realm. No, that's not going to happen, right? So there's relativity to all of this. So what's your age? What are your goals? Let me know. And I'll, and I'll follow up on that. If you let me know in the window now, I'll answer a bit more. And then how do you know what dance style suits you? Well, that's a double-edged sword in a way because there's what you like and what you're good at doing. So you can really, really love doing Latin American dancing, but your body just doesn't agree with it, right? So, but you, but you love dancing, so you should not dance it. But again, if you're being serious about competition or serious about being professional or serious about you know achieving a certain rank, the style has to agree with you as well. Physically, you have to embody certain traits that at least make the dance look good, right? Um, so ballroom dancing is similar as well. So ballroom dancing is more technically challenging in a lot of ways, but it, and that always sparks a bit of, I suppose, controversy because they're both difficult disciplines, but they're different, right? And so I did 10 dance and I could not decide on which one to do. So that sucks, right? Because normally you would go, oh, I'm better at this one than that one. But we were sort of good at both and we liked doing both. So that was what made my decision clear. I loved dancing that, so I did it, right? Uh, if I dropped one of the styles, I think it would have been detrimental for me long-term. Like, I'll give a little thing on teaching here. If you ever want to be a teacher, then the worst thing you can do is, in my opinion, is sort of specialize in one style only because you cut out the other markets. So for example, if you do ballroom dancing, but you don't know Latin dancing very well, well, you're missing out on like 50% of the market that wants to learn Latin because a lot of people come in saying, I want to learn a ballroom and they, they don't know about Latin. So you got to offer that to them. In Australia, we do new folks. So you also have to have that side part as well because that's something that you can now teach three different markets and you can get one market in to go to another one. And that's smart, right? So the same could be true for salsa if you added that on as well. That could be a fourth avenue and you could bring them across. So you go with what you really love doing but if your goals and outcomes and your res your results driven to a higher level of dancing, you have to be very strategic pretty early on, okay? So again, if anyone here is competing, wanting to do something serious with their dancing, want to take it to Broadway, want to get on TV, want to do it in a, in a very serious manner, then that's a decision you make very early up front. And then you work sort of reverse engineering from that to what do you have to do um, year to year, month to month, starting now. And you can do that, by the way. I, I've done that and ballroommastery.com, um, you'll get an ultimate dance planner for free that can help you plot those sorts of things out. Okay, so listen, uh, as we go through this, I need your help people, hit the like button, get the comments going, all right? We've got to make this show popular, very, very popular, okay? I want to make it worth my time and your time. All right, so here we go, here we go. Uh, I'll put that on there, boom, boom, boom. All right. Where was that question? Here. What tips do you have to staying balanced as a follower in solo dancing? Oh, right. That's a good one. So Sandra, I'm assuming you're, do you get knocked off balance by your partner? Because remember, it's always the man's fault. <laughs> right? So it doesn't matter what happens, right? You, you're, you're, you, you know, you can do something right and then your partner can do something wrong and boom, it's all over. So let's assume you're, as you said, you're dancing solo. So balance is a big one. I love it. I've got a couple of videos on my YouTube channel you should have a look at. Uh, literally just type in like ballroom mastery and then type in posture, right? Or ballroom mastery balance. But there's different ways to approach balance. But let's, I suppose let's look at the problem. So what causes you to be off balance? Okay. There's a couple of ways to approach it. So you've got the way that you hold your center, it's all related to your center of gravity. Okay, so let's look at that to begin with. So your belly button, as an example, of being the center of your body. If you push that over your feet, you fall off balance, right? If you push it to the side, all backwards, and you and you don't move your feet, you fall off balance. That's actually how you wanna to try to create movement in ballroom dancing, is this idea of falling and catching. So in ballroom dancing, that's a good idea. And your posture is related to that, of course. So if your your head is doing that, that's gonna help tilt your center of gravity into the wrong direction and you can lose balance. Now, the reason that's important is you want to focus on posture principles to get balance better because a lot of people misunderstand that when they bend their knees, for example, their spine collapses. You know, like when a car gets in a crash, right? You've seen those crazy crash desks, dummies smashing into each other onto a wall. Okay, so you can imagine that that smash into a wall is 
um, the crumple zone of the car, right? So in, in your body, you have these crumple zones and top dancers have almost eradicated the crumple zone. So meaning that they've got such a beautiful, elegant poise and posture in their body that there's no crushing or pulling down through their shoulders. Their back isn't collapsing. Their stomach isn't collapsing in, okay? We'll talk about that in a second. But the idea in ballroom is that you've got this beautiful um, sort of upward feel from your pelvis through the body. And in the, the technical terms called it like an opposition spine. So you're you're lifting up through your back and you, you're also um, pulling down through your spine to create a very long spine, all right? It's not flat, it's a double S. So you're not trying to flatten your back like in ballet. You're trying to keep the natural curves, but inside the feeling is stretching, right? Now that is important because when you go into your toes, you want to feel that when you go right up on your toes and your feet are together, which is where your center of gravity needs to be, is sort of in the middle of your feet or towards the toes, you will feel um, that that the body is very straight, right? You want that. Now, I'll give you a test, Sandra, if you're still there. Can you, and everyone can try this. Put your feet together for a second, right? Put them together, right? Get them together like this. Do a little tap with your ankles, right? A little tap. This is my feet, by the way. <laughs> you like them? Boom, boom. By the way, any more questions, bring them in. So, okay. You tap your feet together like this, yeah? And then what you'll notice when you go up on your toes is do your feet stay together, right? Because if they don't stay together, meaning that when you go up and they open apart, that is a key indication that your muscles in your legs are too dominant in the wrong areas and it's going to pull you off balance. So that's fine. So I'll give you an idea. I'm going to just, uh, I'll try something. I failed at this last one. See again, I'm going to zoom down to my feet. I'll show you what I mean with my ankles, okay? One second. Good. This is bad. See that? Okay. Now, I just realized something. I didn't switch the camera. So that was awesome. You just saw like my ass for all of that. Let's just rock this out again. Here we go. <laughs> so, okay. Feet together, right? Tap your ankles. Okay. Go up. That's good. Right? Go out. That's bad. See that? So that's good. You want your ankles together. <clears throat> That was a better view for sure, right? You can definitely dislike the video for that one. <laughs> okay, so listen, did you notice that when the ankles rolled out, all right, when the ankles rolled out or the feet, that's because like the muscles on the outside of your legs pull and they're more dominant. And you'll notice if you go up, Sandra, on your, on your toes, you might feel your feet fighting like that. So you're gonna wanna get that base tight. So the ankles together when you go up on your toes and then you still need to make sure your your actual uh, posture is also supporting that balance going up, okay? So you want your feet together, go up, and then feel your um, posture through your back being lifted up. And then notice if you wobble back and forward, notice if your pelvis moves around, that's what needs to be strengthened. And then you'll notice your balance start to improve. Now, the tricky part for us is that dancing is movement, right? It's not still, but you need to get that correct first. So that would be like phase one just to feel what good balance is like. Because when you close your feet, you're gonna notice you need to have that happen. So you've moved and then you sort of almost stop and then you move again. And so you wanna know what a good balance feels like when you're stationary, and then you need to maintain that posture when you dance. So when you create that movement, going forward or backwards or sideways, the body itself should always have this feeling of being highly engaged and activated, okay? Anyways, see if that works for you. Um, What's here? I don't have a partner. Great. Decide to learn solo. Great. Spins in Latin are okay and waltz gets me dizzy. I compete in solo. Great. Okay. So let me talk about Latin now. So we'll talk about balance. By the way, bring on the questions, baby. <laughs> uh, bring on the questions, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Let's go. So if we look at the idea of spins, we'll talk about that too. Why not? Let's go into spins. So Latin dancing with posture. And I talked about the crumple zones, yeah? Crumple zones of dance. What we don't want with the crumple zones is feeling that we've got, what's it called? You don't want to feel in Latin American, even though you use the sides of your body, right? So you, you use the ribs, okay? You feel the shoulder weight coming down. Inside, you're never collapsing, right? You're never feeling the weight pull you in and pull you down, right? You don't want that. 
because of that, oh, that inward feeling and the collapsing down, that's where you lose balance in Latin American. But what we have to do, and the, the way, the analogy I always use, and you'll hear me say it a lot, is a flower pot. So you want to feel that the, the middle of the flower pot is your pelvis and the, and the, sorry, the flower pot is your pelvis. The middle of your flower pot is actually the tree growing out of it. And so that's strong, right? The trunk. And then the branch is coming down uh, uh, like a soft willow. And that's your muscles or the arms and, and your, your body on the outside being very soft and tension free. But inside is very strong and sturdy. And that's the best way to think about your posture in the body. And so everything can move around your spine, can move around your abdomen, but you don't drop and crumble into the middle of the flower pot, right? Now, again, check out my YouTube channel for some more specific videos on balance and on posture. But those are the two areas you actually want to fix uh, particularly posture. That's what most people don't understand they have to do the work on. Now, if we talk about spins for a second, all right, oh, let's just take this off. Uh, if we look at spins for a second, uh, the idea of spinning is difficult, right? So spinning is a hard concept for beginner dancers to, to get, but you want to look at, and you know what, I'll make a, I think I'll make a separate, I'll make a proper video on that one because I, lo I love teaching spins, but ideally with t spinning, you just, you want to understand there's a few things going on. Um, you've got uh, and for those who struggle with balance, stay around because I'll talk about um, I'll talk about balance in a minute in a bit more of a specific way for the body. Okay, that just sort of came back to me as a good lesson. Um, okay, so if you look at spinning, right? Spinning, the idea being uh, you want to use your shoulders to help you. So your foot should go to position yourself. You should close your feet, and then you have to sort of come out. So you got a entry, the midpoint, and the exit. That's how you think of a spin. Sort of three parts. Through all of that, you have to have your weight held slightly forward. You have to have your head and chin level and you have to have your eyes spotting. Now, the idea being is you use your shoulders to turn. Okay, so you step, then you use your shoulders to turn. Your head is the first, the last to leave, but the first to arrive. So the head has to be the last to leave and the first to arrive. So the foot goes, the shoulders go, the head is staying still. Then it follows the shoulders and the head whips around. That's called spotting. It spots where it's going at the end. That's why you can't look down. So if you look down, you bend, or you, you tilt or you side load, and then the speed of your body throws you off, right? So it's really important that you learn the mechanics of how this works, but it's very simple. Foot, shoulders, head is the last to leave, first to arrive, and it'll whip around, right, when you do that. So it's it's very powerful technique, actually, thinking about that. Now, let's talk about balance for a quick second, okay? So who here struggles with balance? Anyone Anyone out there? All right, let's, uh, let's have a look over on YouTube, actually. Boom, all right, okay. So if I can get you all, I'll finish this up in a sec, but get up any questions up in here before we go. So let's look at balance, yeah? Balance is uh, the idea of a couple, like sort of five things. So let's talk about these five things for balance, all right? So we talked about posture, we look at balance. There's five things that have to be congruent all the time in any movement for it to work. Let's see if I can remember them. <laughs> the first one is um, you need your ribs, to be, uh, not ribs, it's ABCR. I'll just try to, I'll, I might butcher this live. Man, I should have should prepared for this one. I definitely know it when I teach it, but um, you got your abdomen, right? So your abdomen needs to be strong. You need a strong abdominal region. It always has to be active. That's the word to think about, right? So you've got a strong abdomen. Then you've got your rib cage. Your rib cage can't go out, right? So you don't want your rib cage to go out and you can't have your rib cage suck back to your spine, okay? so. Your rib cage is huge, by the way. So you need to make sure it's always lifted in the correct position and your abs are strong, okay? You also need to make sure your head is not forward, right? So you can see if I, if I poke my chest out, have my head back, that's gonna put me off balance, right? So I need to make sure my chin is horizontal. That helps me keep my head in the right position. So it goes abdomen, ribs, chin, and the head. So I can feel sort of the, the, the oc I think it's what the oculus, what this cr the back of my cr skull, that little divot there. I wanna make sure I can feel that being sort of, went, not on my heels, but towards my heels. So my head's quite straight. So if I've got uh, my core nice and strong, my ribs balanced, my chin horizontal to the ground, and then my head in the right position. When I go to turn or do any balance movement, I've got, a more optimal place to be. There is a fifth part of this, and I just, for the love of God, I can't remember what it is. It's probably to do with the pelvis, right? The pelvis has to be in a neutral position. I would say that's it. Yeah, it's the pelvis first. So we'll go pelvis. So sit like this on the chair, on the chair, right? You sit on your tailbone. 
and then feel your abdomen engage by bringing your belly button to your spine. Feel your ribs sitting normally. Bring your chin level and your head into its normal spot. So it goes pelvis one, rib, uh, abdomen two, ribs three, chin four, head five. That's the setup for balance, right? And you, you, you keep that in line and in mind when you're doing movement. So if your head goes down like that and you try and spin, you're going to die, right? Don't do that. Um, if your eyes look down, your head will follow. That's why we say don't look at the floor. And so you want to make sure that those five points are in a line, okay? So if you give that a shot. If you need to go back through this, feel free to do that. Um, let's see. Now, I'll give a couple of minutes just to um, see if there's anyone else that has any more questions. Uh, bring them on. Bring them on. If you've got anything, it doesn't matter what it's about, like in terms of dancing or whatnot. It'd be really cool because these are off the cuff, these things. So if that's all we have, that's cool for tonight. But I really appreciate having you all here. And um, for those tuning in on the replay, it's also good to have you. And each week you can sort of have a chance to submit things in. One day I'll be able to bring you in live on video. I'll figure that out one day too. Let's have a look. All right, cool. Well, let's change up the lights. Boom. Maybe that'll do a difference. So... Ulrich, how are you doing, my man? Cool. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I might wrap it up there. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I look forward to uh, seeing you. Make sure you check out boremastery.tv. Let's finish off the night with some cocktails. <laughs>